bring up Bavish now from Ola Car Cabs. Bavish, jump on stage. So what we're going to do is everybody's going to have a moment to tell a story, and then we're going to bring everybody up together to continue the conversation. Um, so you've come a long, long way since IIT Bombay <laughs> and then Microsoft Research. I can't keep up with the number of businesses you're running now. There's it's only one called Ola one. Money, Ola Cafe, Ola Boat. <laughs> <laughs> this is some business. And I know building a gigantic, I guess it's an infrastructure company as much as anything. That's not easy. So, December 2010, you launched. Was it entirely smooth between then and 2016, or were there some early moments you're happy to share with us? It was anything but entirely smooth. Uh, you call it an infrastructure company. My, my parents call it a travel agency. <laughs> <laughs> So when I started off, my, you know, so my background is I'm an IIT Bombay grad, finished bachelor's in 2008, worked at Microsoft for two years. And to any average middle class, you know, tier two family, tier two city family, that's like, you know, oh, our son is on the way to the US and he'll do his PhD or master's or MBA or actually till about one year ago, my, my dad used to ask me, when, is, when are you doing your MBA? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, dad, can't you see I'm, I'm building a business? Why do I need an MBA? <laughs> but uh, so, you know, my dad was, Crazy, he, he thought I'm, I'm crazy, you know, you're starting a travel agency. He couldn't understand why am I doing all these random things. Okay, so, so he didn't speak to me for a while, but now he's made peace with me, so he's okay. He still doesn't understand, so now he asks me, okay, when will the company turn a profit? Why are these people giving you so much money? You know? <laughs> are, you doing, are you doing something wrong, beta? <laughs> so that was the, uh, you know, I think most Indian middle class uh, families have an attitude like that, but thanks to the attention the startup ecosystem is getting now, uh, from variety of uh, you know people, institutions, it's become more acceptable to start up. Uh, one story, actually I was just talking to Vani, you know, this is such a wonderful setup here, you know, and I, I just learned that it's the incubator. And Kunal and I were chatting about how our first offices were. So we, my first office was in a very seedy mall in Mumbai, in Bhandup, Mumbai, called Dreams Mall. <laughs> you, know, you could read a dream small or dream small, <laughs> depending on how you want to connect the characters. <laughs> but that's the irony of it. So, and our office was in the basement. And uh, in the basement there were shops. So we had a small 100 square feet shop, corner shop with two side shutters. Every morning we used to go open the shutter. Uh, one day my co-founder lost the opener, so we had to scroll, you know, find an opener. And every weekend there used to be you know, loud music blaring because it's a mall. People come shopping and people need to be entertained. And we had a call center in that mall. So you know, from there, five years ago to now, where this is such a wonderful setup for companies, you, know, you can just skip all those uh, unnecessary steps of the early times when you know, there's more support from the ecosystem, there's more mentorship, there's more infrastructure support, capital is more easily available. You know, one small story on capital raising. So when uh, the toughest round I've raised ever was my angel round. When I, when I started Ola, I didn't have any money. I had like, between me and my co-founder, we had two lakh rupees and we thought, okay, we have some money. Uh, and then we raised that angel round and that was the toughest ever because who was going to give money to a young, naive software engineer who, who started a taxi business? And uh, that time, this whole transportation revolution that's happening now was not started. You know, it was not the buzzword. Uh, because we started off in December 2010, there was not the buzzword at all. In India, a taxi business, people thought you're crazy. And uh, I remember I raised 34 lakhs, and I thought I don't need any more money ever. <laughs> but you know, these stories like these show how fast the learning is when you start up, especially if you are a young, uh, you know, first-time entrepreneur. Uh, so I had never run a business before; I'd been an engineer. So a lot of learnings along the way, from you know, every every step. And I think, what is it, half a billion so far that you've raised? No, actually, one and a half. One and a half. <laughs> Sorry. My numbers are outdated. <laughs> yeah, you missed the previous two, three Sorry. months. <laughs> there was dirt on my screen. So you managed to get over those early hurdles. Are you happy to share something that you got wrong that is a bit embarrassing that maybe other people won't do? I think Mukesh shared all the embarrassing stuff. Uh, 
But you know, those are the mistakes every young startup makes uh, because it's the first time you're doing it. It's about a team. Uh, it's about you know raising capital at the right time at the right value, uh, scaling fast, putting in the right systems in place. Uh, you know, I think most companies which are in a high transaction business tend to delay putting in systems and processes and you know, institu institutionalizing these things uh, soon enough because you're always busy or you need to hire this guy, you need to raise some funding, etc. So when I look back over the past four years, uh, you know, growing the team with you is very important in an institutional way, making sure the team knows how to do their job because not only is your job as a founder changing every day, the team's job is also changing every day. And companies growing like this, people will not grow like this unless you train them properly. And uh, most of the times people grow like this and so every, every year you'll have to replace your entire team so that doesn't work. So that's one major, major learning that you need to institutionally grow your team. I just got another quick question. Um, there's another company operating in many jurisdictions, I can't remember what its name is, that <laughs> has been really aggressively trying to build market share and it's raised even more money than you and they're not easy people to compete with. What do you think it is that's given you that edge inside India? Sure. I don't mind naming the company. Uh, it's not that those, you know, like the Harry Potter thing, he, he, he who shall not be named. <laughs> but you know, when, when Uber came into India uh, about three years ago, we were tiny. We were, uh, I remember exactly because I was scared shitless. Uh, we were doing 2,000 rides a day and we had two crores in the bank. That's it. If they wanted and if they executed well, they could have just, within 15 days, you know, <laughs> crushed us. But what, uh, you know, when I look back, what worked for us, and still it's very early, we still have a lot of execution to do. But what has worked for us so far is the fact that we have, from a first principles point of view, always built for India and built ground up from India. And the reason we started the business was not, oh, there's something called Uber in the US and we need to build it here. We had our own, you know, starting uh, position. We actually, Ola was not a, uh, you know, we initially started off with an outstation taxi service, which is a very different thing from what we are today. So we had our own ground level uh, view of what India is, what India needs, and that reflects in the breadth of our platform. We today have an auto rickshaw service, we have a bus service, we have, uh, you know, we, we'll have a, a few more things. We have Ola boats, like you said. You know, that's the <laughs> uh, it, it reflects in the breadth of our service. It reflects in the kind of brand connect our brand has in 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 the real India, in the deep depths of India, be it the big cities or be it the small cities. And uh, it reflects in how our drivers uh, think about us, the brand we've built for the drivers, the, uh, the facilities we've built for the drivers. Uh, so our business model, our features on the product, our brand, everything is very local. And that's, it's a very obvious thing to say, but that's where the trick is. Babi Shagawal, Avula Cabs. <laughs>